oh, you guys are actually that stupid, that you write entire story arcs because of a scene of a guy jumping towards a Balrog. So, Dan, it's good to see you. Yeah, good but, to see you guys. Um, I have to admit, we're here for a very specific purpose today, and it may not be the purpose that you think it is walking in. Um, this is a bit of a reverse intervention that Jonathan and I have decided to do. Uh, as our viewers will know, we're, we're here in California, and um, usually in an intervention, a person engages in destructive behavior, and then their friends and loved ones come in and they save them mm -hmm. from the, they face them with what they've done. In this case, I realized that we're the ones that have been engaging in destructive behavior <laughs> by watching Rings of Power. And we thought, what you've made the right choice, mm -hmm. but not today. So no. today, today we're gonna, this is a reverse intervention, and we are going to bring the Rings of Power in all of its glory, <laughs> and it's for its final episode here to you, so that you can also share in <laughs> our joy and um, stuff. Dan's back. Look, hey. everybody. Yeah. Hey. All right. And we're all together. This is, I hope this all works. We've jury rigged a nice little setup with phones and microphones and laptops and iPads and. Super professional. We're awesome. A good board game, which we won't have time for, sadly. We're going to hunt for the ring today in today's episode. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we finished, or sorry, Michael and I finished. <laughs> right, correct. The, uh, the, have you seen any of season two of the rings of power. i think i might have seen Other a, a clip here Other and there or a meme here and there i think i saw elrond and galadriel making out <laughs> the best um, parts you saw all the best parts i, I watched that several oh, times um, <laughs> on repeat it's in the background <laughs> no but uh i i really have no idea so what this happened will, this will be great so we will get we will just so that you guys all know and th those of you who've been watching uh, us for a long time know we would uh, when when we went through the silmarillion uh last year before Life got in the way for Dan. Mm -hmm. uh, we are, uh, by the way, we're all in Southern California right now, kind of hanging out. Uh, so random. This isn't going to be common, though. Since no, I'm still like the rings of power. Weather. This is this will swiftly <laughs> come to an end. <laughs> but we will have an extended podcast, and we will do Dan's Big Thought. You guys all missed that. We know. We missed Dan's Big Thought. Right. So we're going to go to Dan's Big Thought on this episode. Probably, probably right in the beginning. Really? I, I think so. What What is he reacting to? The memes and everything else he's seen. <laughs> All uh, right. What he knows about this through the zeitgeist of the times, we will. My my recommendation is two two big thoughts. We have Dan's big thought at the beginning, mm. and then Dan's big thought at the end okay. after okay. after That's hearing the full okay. glory of All the right. Rings of Power episode okay. eight. And then we'll we'll go into a little bit of an extended podcast. It'll be short this time. This is gonna be a long episode, guys. Uh, we'll probably split it up for three parts on YouTube again. We're going through this episode in three different ways with the dwarves and Numenor is one episode, with uh, Gandalf. And the other Southlands, anything that happens in the southeast of Middle Earth, we'll do that one. And then we'll do the elves. That'll be the long, the long one. Not that a whole lot actually happens. Anyway, <laughs> we don't earn anything. So, so if you want to get the story of our podcast, podcast you can go become a member at thewondering.com slash member, get our extended podcast, four dollars a month, first month is free. So if you don't like it, somebody canceled this month because they didn't like it. So I'm sorry. Whoa. But uh, you know, everyone has their has to bear the bad decisions of their life for the rest of well, the time on this. And to be plane. fair, we've gotten a lot of subscribers too in the last few weeks. Yeah, well, well, well hmm. we have. Yeah, the YouTube has been going good, uh, and we got a lot of viewers. Like you guys, um, there's a lot of hate watching. But if you want to get a little more, join our Discord chat. Uh, just become a member at wondering.com/member, or you can use Patreon, wondering.com/patreon. Okay, so um, Dan, I. I, th I think now that you've seen certain things, like you said, you mentioned the um, uh, the, the connecting of lips between Galadriel. <laughs> and, of lips. I, I did see the connecting of lips, yes. Um, we have to know about... Dan's Big Thought. What the hell, Amazon? <laughs> what is this garbage? This is a dumpster fire. What yeah, the yeah, hell? That's yeah. my thought. That's your thought. They've made the dumpster fire larger um, since season one, but yes, it, it, it turns out that shipping people <laughs> is their is their tactic, mm -hmm. um, as we'll find out by the end of this episode. Basically, yeah. their 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 focus, um, their desire is let's make sure that there's pseudo romantic relationships between as many characters as possible, 
because we're all 13 years old and we we really find this to be highly entertaining. It's junior high drama. Yeah, this is exactly yeah. right. Yeah, so I, I wrote a review of the first season on Not the Bee. So if you go on Not the Bee and check out my review, I loved think, it. I forget what the editor titled it. It was like something like they should have thrown this into Mordor or something like that. <laughs> Throw <laughs> it in the fire. <laughs> it's probably it might hold the record for like the longest article on Not the Bee. Like it's mm-hmm. like so long because you guys forced me to watch it the first time around mm-hmm. and so we we had all these thoughts and and i remember sending you guys the, my my rough draft and having you guys help me punch it up and yeah so we, we got a lot in there and i think the editor took some out and it's still the longest article on their website awesome, awesome. and so that and that and that's where i i just decided for my own mental health i will not watch the next <laughs> of Rings of Power. and you didn't well and done, I, and sir. i didn't well until <laughs> Until today, it's, you guys are showing us. Well, well let's, let, let's 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 be clear. You still haven't watched it because you're, you're smart, right. unlike us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so we're just well, here to tell you some some, some of the well, low, the highlights and the lowlights. Look, guys. Like Michael, hold up your thing. After we watch this, we don't just watch this and not come prepared, guys. Like, so Michael's so old school. So Michael here, does it. Here's all my notes. Pages. All pages, my notes about mm, the rings pages. of power. <laughs> like this is only one episode. Yeah, that I did this for eight episodes. Oh, yeah. That was the worst when they did release all three in the first three in one week. That was that was painful. I, I felt like I was losing a chunk of my life. Yes, eternity. yeah, that was that was painful. And then we we so we've been releasing in YouTube. We've been breaking them up into yeah, three, three parts. Three yeah, because we know that you guys only have a certain amount you can bear. Yes, the whole it's only so much pain. You know what they say about staring into the abyss. <laughs> It's don't scary. stare don't stare too long no. yeah <laughs> yeah well thankfully it, it's over as frodo rightly said after casting the ring into the <laughs> no, he didn't cast him into the ring after uh, after uh, uh, Gollum did it off his hand and fell into the fire but it is over by the grace of all that is good and holy this is now over but i guess well, the, the season's over i guess I, I'm, not, I'm not taking pity on the season i guess that's the trick <laughs> there, there, there's no pity like i like, like frodo had on Gollum that uh, might say yeah this in the end. i have more pity for Gollum than i do for, this, for, this, for this, show. This, this show all right well i guess it's about time then that we get started on the show we're going to start today with the dwarves and that little nothing bit about numenor sure we'll start with the small part so yeah uh, that was a short joke uh, <laughs> sorry about that um, and and we have so we have what's going on. So we're, if uh, viewers remember, and um, for Dan who doesn't remember, blessedly because he never watched it, um, mm-hmm. last episode. Yeah, I'm going to keep bringing that up over and over again. L- last episode, uh, we were told that Durin was going to lead the army of dwarves to save the elves of Eregia, and he was in battle armor, and they're all walking, basically, essentially walking out the door, ready. Right to their teleportation pad because that's the way it works. Uh, uh, do? No distance. Remember, you no. remember that about season. Yeah, they, 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 they walk just, out they the teleport and they teleport wherever they want. Right, the which is this vast land. But anyway, so they're heading to their teleportation pad, and and um, <laughs> there's a moment where Narvi, the the um, dwarven architect who worked with Celebrimbor on the doors of Durin, yeah. um, outside of uh, and and is is one of the you know main dwarven characters, comes in with a bloodied head. Hmm. saying that uh, Durin's... That's his own head, not it... somebody else's head. Oh, right. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> like he comes like in that. with his uh, with his head bloodied yeah, um, and and uh, explains to Durin the, the fourth that Durin the third, his father, has gone mad and attacked his own guards and has taken his axe down to the mines. And he's now, because the dwarves won't mine anymore because they're they're a little trepidatious about what might be uh, down there. and and uh, But not Durin the third. So Durin the third has decided he's going to mine with a contraption built by nobody ever that will never work as a mining instrument he decides to take a battering ram to the walls because that's how you mine you take a battering ram a personal one person battering ram, okay and you just slam it repeatedly into the wall okay and then that creates a mine apparently so he's decided to do that and um and so uh during the fourth decides that he's going to go down and confront his father and the armies of um the dwarves are not going to well, the armies of the dwarves turn back in order to also prevent that's what they said. So they couldn't go to help the elves because they were going to go and... Because one guy, one, one guy dwarf, dwarf, was okay. in the, the mine. So apparently that's the way it takes to stop an army of dwarves is like one guy to say, no, I'm going to go mine. And, and they're like, right. well, I guess we're not going to help our friends, the elves. Right. So, so it's the it's the rules of mining that come from Minecraft. That's good. Wow. That is, that's I missed you, Dan. Uh, <laughs> so this is this is Minecraft during. So, All right. Great. So I don't know what you would do with Disa, but Disa was the one there protecting the mines. She's mm-hmm. the one that didn't die. So Durin goes down. Prince Durin goes down to 
to talk to his father, um, and uh, he's he's simply there mining, and his banging, nobody else's, but just his, because he was so intent yes. on finding the mithril uh, that is now... So he sees his father mining, just skipping forward. And by, like, mining, and by mining, we mean banging battery. or battering ram into a wall. And, and so this wall, again, is about a foot thick. Yep. Right? It, he just bangs through it, and it opens up to this massive chasm cavern cavern of mithril veins right. there. Right. And that's what wakes the Balrog. They have a nice little discussion about how they'd arm wrestle. Right. They used to arm wrestle when they were kids. And uh, or how, during the fourth as a kid. How his dad would never let him win. His dad was always the strongest. Uh, but but wait. So oh, okay. because to get, to get to that part, yeah. We have we're supposed to be given this moment and, and another there's gonna be a lot of these, but this is this is another a junior high moment. This is another another 14, 15 year old moment. Because Durin has left the, the commanding of the armies to save the elves, a whole race, including his friend Elrond. And he's come down to confront his father, and he's telling his father, take off the ring. The ring is doing this to you, because um, his father was given one of the dwarven rings, and this is what's corrupted him. And so he, all he wants to do is mine, and he wants wealth. And so he's, so the ring, that's the way it works, according to uh, the rings of power, is dwarven, dwarven rings just turn you, and you become like a zombie. Like, you're sitting there like, Slamming away the bat batter ram into the wall like a zombie. Yeah. So Durin, his son, uh, comes to him uh, the fourth and and uh, tells him, "Take off the ring, you know. And if you won't take it off, I'll take the hand off with it." And he's got his axe. Okay. So so he's this is his powerful statement. What is he going to do? He's willing in order to save his father's life from this corrupting inf influence given to us by the Rings of Power series. Um, he's willing to even uh, have his father lose his hand. So that he can save, so Durin the Fourth can save his father and the Dwarven Kingdom because it's, it's being led by a madman now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, so that's a decent enough premise. They do no work to make us believe that there's anything worthwhile there, but that, that's their premise. And then his father turns and says to him something along the lines of, Do you really think you have the strength? And typical rings of power moment, he stops and he goes, no. And he starts <laughs> crying. Right. And he start, literally starts crying, crying because again. that's what everyone does in this series. They freaking start crying about everything because this was written by 13-year-old um, children. And, uh, and well, we were told it was all directed. It was, it was all women. All women directors. So, uh, so everyone cries all the time. And, and so, so literally his whole point is, I'm stepping up. If you're during the fourth, I'm stepping up. I'm taking the good, I'm putting the good of the kingdom and I'm saving my father all at once. I'm going to remove this ring. My father says, you really think you're strong enough? And immediately, no, I'm not. I'm, you were always the strong one. I'm crying and I dropped my ax. So you've, you've, you're an utter failure is what you are because you're not even willing to do that, what you came here to do. And, and, and it's all because sensitivity. And, and so then his father turns around and breaks through the final wall and says, this is the riches we've been waiting for. And it's all the mithril. And then the Balrog comes up. Do you have anything to say about the Balrog? Well, we know it doesn't progress much later. You remember what woke the last year? Last year, do you remember what woke the Balrog? Last year. Last See, year. It was very, very something huge. Something fell, something fell gently. Year. Gently down into the chasm and it woke the Balrog up. There was oh. a leaf. Oh, it was there was a, do you remember? Uh, see, I don't remember. You this. have pushed this out of your mind. Yeah. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. So it was a leaf. So now we have actual banging, though the dwarves. So here's the other thing we don't know how far they've delved. One man apparently delved too deep. Not all the dwarves, just the king delved too deep. And, by and himself. By himself. Now, what they've tried to establish in the show is that the ring tells Durin where to mine. Mm hmm. So the ring has an ability. The rings have are, are the MacGuffin that can do anything. It can they, can, they literally they uh, King Durin um, hits his son with the ring and it blasts him like across 20 feet the room. Yeah, across the room. Superpower ring. Sweet. So because, because that's needed in that so, scene. So the ring yeah. is essentially they're trying to say, oh, the ring is what makes him delve too deep, or not even too deep. The right places is yeah. really what they're saying. Um, so mm. so and they said like I think you mentioned Michael. They said uh, in the the. Uh, the commentary after this episode that this was a moment they were they were yeah well, the, the death of Durin the third so the king sacrifices himself but, but I say that the greatest of charity when I say he sacrifices himself because that's what they want us to believe so here comes the Balrog the king recognizes his hero now in the face of the Balrog removes the ring cool right why yep. 
The conf well, I mean, like, it's shocked him. Whatever. First of all, I'd like to point out, though the actor is pretty good, he, he doesn't actually display shock. We don't see it on his face where he's, like, shocked and then removes the ring, like, you know, like, in a moment like Frodo does. Or something. Frodo is, has the ring on it and pulls it off at the last instant. So there's none of that. So that was weird. So what he, what he does, he pulls the ring off. So presumably, according to the conceit of this show, what that means is now during the third, the king is in control of himself again. And he's going to do what's right for himself and for his family and for especially for his people. So here we have a Balrog coming up. And what is right, apparently, is to turn and look at his son and say, you were always the strong one. And then he takes his axe and he just charges to his death. Now, now th there's a world in which you could show the part of despair where he realizes, I've caused all this and I, I give up and I'm despairing and I'm suicidal. Mm -hmm. We don't see any of that on his face. We don't see it. There's no moments given to that. So, so, but he, so, but he just runs and jumps and, and comes at the Balrog, which is a few minutes, a minute after. And, and this scene that we're showing. And, and, he, and, he, and he kills himself. Why? I know I'm not supposed to ask this, but why? What's the reason? He's supposed to be in control of his senses now. So he's, the ring is off. So he goes and kills himself. There's, it's, it means nothing. He's not, he's not doing a Gandalf where he destroys the bridge and by killing himself prevent, because that's what we're supposed to be like member berries, right? right? We're supposed to be like member fighting the Balrog, someone sacrificing himself, member. Yeah, yeah, right. And, and, and so that's what we're supposed to, and, but, but, by jumping and fate into the Balrog and dying in, in like three seconds, um, he hasn't prevented the Balrog from coming after his friends. He or, just... or has he? Because anything can go in this show. Perhaps he alone, and the, the large clash we'll see here in a second. Um, well, there's, there's the rings and they're sitting on it. And first of all, okay, if the ring gives him powers, like why, would, why would the ring, why would he not wear the ring to destroy the Balrog? Anyway, sorry. Like all these sort of dummies. Uh -huh. And also, when he says you're the strong one, they have made it clear to us, and he pointed this out, that Doran the Younger is the weak one. He's the one that he couldn't confront his father. And when his fra father, uh, you know, uh, when, 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 when he, he realizes, realizes his father is corrupted by the ring, what does he go do? He cries to his wife. Yep. Like right. that, that's his first reaction. Mm -hmm. Not to be angry, not to be resolute, not to find a way to save his people. It's. I'm going to go and cry. I I'm can't believe my daddy is so <laughs> that's, that's his reaction. So when he says you're the strong one, or, I mean, internally, you might say, say this out loud, but internally, you're saying, I don't believe you. Nope. There's no maybe, way that we would actually believe Maybe that that's the true strength all along. He, he rejected <laughs> <Stop>. toxic masculinity. <laughs> <laughs> He's not afraid to cry. That's what makes him strong, right? And, the, and, and so, so explain this to me then. It, is there any way to, to explain away this scene where he's... So he goes and he runs and he jumps. And, and you have to see the relative size here. I mean, it, it zooms in on him. So he's jumping in the air. There's rocks falling, and, and then the Balrog comes at him. So he's he's literally dead in three seconds. This is not Gandalf. This is no Maiar who can fight another Maiar. For yeah, days on yeah, yeah. Him. Um, also, he hasn't destroyed a bridge. The worst that's happened. The best I can say about the scene is um, the Balrog himself, by climbing up, has collapsed part of that wall back down, so that there's. There it is. There it is. Like axe versus Balrog sword. Okay. And then it's explosion. It explodes, and then that brings the tunnel down. Yeah. Okay, but okay. you have to understand. We were just shown the tunnel is like this thick. Yeah. So if you're a Balrog and you just brought some rocks down in this little tunnel that a one-man battering ram made, guess what you have to do? Reach in and push the rocks out, and now you're invading Casa Doom. Which is, by the way, what I thought they were going to go with. I thought they were going to go with the dwarves can't come and save the elves because now the Balrog's been unleashed. And that would make sense. He's going to drive them out of Casa Doom, which is actually what happens in the, in, in the books mm -hmm. or in the legendary. I mean, it's mentioned in the, in, yeah. in the, yeah. um, the appendices. But, but, but that's not, in fact, what happens because, as we're shown later in the show, immediately. Well, let's, let's go to that point. Because that's that is that is literally the next scene with the dwarves, uh, where uh, the, the apparently the Balrog has been defeated. You defeat he defeated him by dying in three seconds, and then his, the Balrog just decides, well, I guess I'll go back to my hole. 
I guess. Like, because the so next, scene, back the next time we're show, yeah. everyone's calm. Clearly, no one's fighting. No one's running. There's no, there, there's no tragedy. It's just, and we're, and we're being taught, and we're talking about who's the next king going to be. So literally, there's this massive creature, ancient evil of legend that's been unleashed upon the dwarves, and a three foot section of wall fell down, and now they're all safe. I mean, this is absurdity. Uh, this is so unbelievable. And now, and now, here we are at the end. This is actually near the end of the episode. Am I right? This is. So this you is, were, yeah, this is one of the final you, you were saying it was Brock that one dwarf was able to hammer through Minecraft style. Yeah, yeah Minecraft right. style. So it, now the Balrog like is minutes. like, oh man, that, that's, that's 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 too thick. I can't get <laughs> right, through. Right, right. right. The Balrog. Okay. I mean, maybe he's taking his time munching on during the third or something. Okay. I don't know. But but clearly, the Dwarven Kingdom is not in peril anymore because they're all standing around calmly discussing the, right. the, the who's going to be the next king. Well, not only that, we learned from we learned from uh, Narvi here. That's Narvi right there that you see on the screen. Yeah. Uh, they find out that uh, the elves at this point, right, so Oregiana is defeated. We'll get into that in the, the, the elves part of this episode. The elves have fled to a valley north of here, is the way he puts it. Right, which is... Okay, so they find out that the elves... In Lari's, the Riverdale, yeah. But then we find out from Disa, there are other problems, my lord, and this reminds me of, they've gone to the George R. R. Martin of like, well, what about the taxation policy? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> because she's worried about the what? other dwarf lords are demanding to collect on the vast tributes that they... That they submitted, which I I, I laughed out loud. Like, uh -huh. so you have a whole writers' room, and they use this line. I wrote it down. The lords of the Blue Mountains paid him vast tribute, and now they're demanding to collect. Did you? Did anyone ever look up the word tribute? Do you know what that means? No one collects on tribute. Tribute is given to a king, and you don't get it back. That's not the way it works. So the fact that they were like someone in the writers' room, like yeah. this is our big reason we can't go help the elves because there's some people that want some money. Yeah. Uh, okay. I guess that's more important than the entire race and the <laughs> the rise of Sauron and and the large. By the way, being that's by the way, Sauron. Remember, gave his father the ring. That was it. Like, so if he cares about his father, like, wouldn't he want revenge? Wouldn't there be some like Sauron's come back to Middle Earth? No, no. There's some other dwarves. They want some money. So, so we have to pay attention yes. to that. Yes. And not, not only that, because we find out that now, um, just out of the blue. Um, Durin is apparently, according to some of these other dwarf lords that he, we haven't met yet, yep. don't know any of them, that he's not their father's preferred heir. It might very well be his brother. Dun, dun, dun. Who we've never met. There's a brother. I've never heard anything There's about. a brother. Okay. Just throw this in there. According to random writer number 12 in Good. the writer's room, oh, there's, a brother. there's a brother. And, and we're supposed to be... What kind of storytelling is this crap? I mean, is, this, is, this is so bad. Well, so what we, what, what I think, what, and Dan pointed this out, is I think we know that the brother is probably even more in touch with his feminine side. <laughs> so that's the more dwarves, brother. That's right. These dwarves are even more you resilient thought, to be behind You him. thought during the fourth was not, was, had, had been uh, vesting himself of the toxic masculinity, divesting yeah. himself of the toxic. His brother is even more. more. Untoxic. He's been, he's been crying in the other mountains for, days. for a while. The reason we haven't seen him is because he's been crying in the Iron Hills. So why do you, why do you think the Rings of Power writers do this? Where it's like they get they write to a point and they go, oh crap. Um, well, there's there's a brother, and that's yeah, why there's think, there's a new drama now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, well, why, so why does it just I show think, up out of I think nowhere? It comes from, and a lot of people say this is that they, those these two writers worked with J.J. Abrams. J.J. Abrams is all about setting forth mysteries that might not ever have answers to them, like the mystery box, right? Mm -hmm. oh, mystery, box, mystery box, yeah, that's right? lost, like lost. Like the movie, exactly, the show, yes. lost. We throw in all these things. They don't have an answer to it yet, but they realize, oh, we can't, we can't not move forward with the with the dwarves unless there's a mystery that is set forth. To be resolved in the next season, or to be addressed in the next season. That's why they wouldn't name the stranger Gandalf forever. That's why uh, we had Halbrand. That's why uh, the, the, the Balrog was there. Oh, what's the mystery? How's the Balrog gonna get there? Right. So they have all these ideas, but they they throw them in there because somebody's like, guys, we need we need to have a mystery. We need to have something unknown. We need to have a new point of tension so that next year people look forward to that. But they they do that 
in the final ep- in the one episode where it should have been set up the entire time. There should have been right. a struggle for power. There should have been his brother coming in and saying, like, I want the ring. The ring is going to be mine, right? Or something like that. But yeah, they don't. You know, you're really right, Jonathan. It, it's more, they shifted to the whole Game of, Game of Thrones thing. Like, let's go to the politics angle. And yeah, so now yeah. politics is going to be the thing. But the, the, the thing that makes Game of Thrones popular is because Martin and um, in many of the seasons of, of Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon, they do it believably. Yeah. They, yeah. Like, if you want to go to the politics angle, you can build a political mm-hmm. system yes. and you right. can show political struggle. That's a real thing. Um, they, but, but they're just using it as a cope, as, a, as, a, as their safety net. We're like, oh, um, we realize, oh, darn, I guess the dwarves, why wouldn't the dwarves know? Apparently, the Balrog's not attacking them because we're stupid. But but now the dwarves, so the dwarves would, in fact, go help the elves against Sauron. So why aren't they going to help the elves? The uh, politics. Yeah. How about that? And, and this whole discussion should have been about the Balrog. Yep. should have been about the king and his sacrifice. Yep. And what are we going to do with our people now? Who's going to yep. lead Where them? was the discussion? Like, what about the elves and the struggle now? We don't have we don't have the elves on our, we don't have an ally on our border and like all this sort of stuff. Like, yep. if they talk about politics and who's going to lead. Literally, that's a great point. Literally, why aren't they discussing the Balrog? Yep. Like, Just, let's say, <laughs> let's say that the three feet of rock that fell was enough to dissuade a Balrog, okay? Um, as the dwarves, it's not going to dissuade him forever. He's right there. Mm-hmm. Now our kingdom is right here. What are we going to do about him? Why aren't they talking about that? Why aren't they talking about this? His, like you said, why aren't they giving tra- tribute and sacrifice? They're staring at the empty throne of, yeah, the, of, yeah, of during yeah. the third. Mm-hmm. So again, they just fail on every level. Fail, yeah. fail, fail. And that's, that's where the story ends. Is the, uh, the political intrigue of the dwarves that we all okay. so much cared about. So we, we love the dwarves. They're so cool. Or just um, any conversation at all about like what. What the hell was that? There's this <laughs> big, like, there's this yes, big demon monster. Like, what was that? <laughs> did you guys know about Narvi? Have you heard about this Visa? I mean, you're you're, you're no. the most knowledgeable one here. We wouldn't, wouldn't you have told us right, about right. this being? Nope. Not a word. I'm just, yeah, not, I'm just, not they just, they just move on. Freaking word. And you know, all the last thing I'll say is that I made the mistake. This one last episode in listening. There's ten minutes. There's a ten minute sh- thing where the where the showrunners and writers comment on their own episode at the end of every Amazon episode here. And I actually watched it this time. And it was, because it's the last one, I'm like, I'm going to watch what they say about their own show. And J.D. Payne, or Patrick McKay, I don't remember which one it was, but anyway, one of them was saying that this moment of the leaping of Durin the Third with his axe towards the Balrog at the end, he said this was conceived years ago. And we've been working towards this moment the whole time. And at that at that moment, when I listened to that, there was a click uh, in my brain. I went, "Oh, oh, you guys are actually that stupid that you write entire story arcs because of a scene of a guy jumping towards a Balrog, and you have, and not only that, but you don't even have the ability to make this believable. You can't even build. You're like, this is a cool scene. Why? Um, because I'm 13 years old." And, and, and then you you have no ability to even make it make sense. Like, I can imagine someone saying, well, what if we had um, Durin the Third sacrifice himself to the Balrog? At the, okay, that's an interesting idea, actually. I mean, it's not interesting because the, they should, should be two Durins alive at the same time. And this is the wrong timeline, blah, 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 blah. But let's say you go with this timeline. That's an interesting idea. Let's build a story that makes that believable. Fail, 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 yeah. fail, fail. They, 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 they just it's can't it. even... I mean, they're like, we're so inspired by this scene that we write crap that no one can believe to get us there. Yeah. And, and then well, we talked about that with the first season where it's like nothing happens for six or seven episodes. And it's all to get to they want to create Mordor. So they want this big volcano. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. But do they explain that in a way that, that makes sense? No, it's like there's like this key in the mountain and now there's water right. flowing yeah. in the volcano. But in order explodes. for the key to work, someone would have to literally dig miles of trash right, across. Right, right, right. It wouldn't actually work <laughs> yeah. unless someone did like a two. Right, but but season like, two sucks. But it's like season one, we got to create Mordor yeah. and we have to have rings. Okay, let's let's throw some stuff together, some filler episodes, and we'll get to that on episode eight. I forgot that um, the whole point of season one was essentially to create Mordor. When it was already there and there was no need to create it, and you could yeah. have actually worried about the characters and plotting. And but this whole this whole last episode reminds me of that exact same thing, Dan, where, where it becomes clear in these clips, like, this whole season was written so we could have a Balrog. Right. And during, during the third could die. This whole season was written so that Adar could, sorry, spoiler. Adar could die, and Galadriel can, and they can find her. Oh, no, Adar died. Was written so that Aregion could be destroyed. By Aregion, we mean Austin and Theo, because we 
yeah. told you what it was, and then yeah. we forgot with our own name that we wrote. So, so it, it's just like piece yeah. after piece after piece. This whole season, this whole season, the point of it was to to tell you, guess what? He's really Gandalf because no one ever knew that. <laughs> just like yeah, these are the least, the, the the worst possible hidden secrets. Yeah, Halbrand and Gandalf, and now apparently Sauron. Uh, All right, Numenor. Numenor. Okay, so. We get to the one scene they have in Numenor, which lasts nearly five minutes long. In this, Numenor seemed like a complete afterthought in yeah. this in this season, as if it like they didn't really need to do anything in Numenor. By the way, Numenorians, they will go from leader to leader at the drop of a hat. They are fickle. They are they, like, uh, oh, get this, get this. This is uh, okay, so much time. This has to be a little short. Sure. So, large animals <laughs> determine who is the leader of Numenor. Of large animals, large, large animals. animals, yes, very large. Yes, animals. So there, there's a big scene where. Tar, where, where Muriel is going to become uh-huh. queen because her yeah. father's died, and and sometimes when that happens, apparently eagles sh- an eagle shows up to oh, sort of man. put the a man to give Manway's blessing upon okay. the king. So they're all in a court, and she's about to be declared queen, and the eagle shows up right behind, and then and then the da- the fake daughter of of um, Elendil, who who didn't have a daughter, but um, okay, they are we? I vaguely yeah, yeah, remember her. Erwin shows up and throws a palantir down some steps because remember when a palantir fell down steps, um, and, and 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 everyone and and says, you know, the the queen has been using this elf stone, this elf tool. Everyone's like gasp, and then immediately, then the eagle show lands, and then Ferrazon walks over closer to the eagle. And someone starts chanting, Ferrazon's king. And, king. and the eagle, who's forgotten how to talk, because the eagles of Manway can talk, but this uh, one can't, just screeches and screeches. And everyone chants, and Ferrazon's sword. And Ferrazon holds, yeah. and then Fer- so Ferrazon's king. So everyone, so that's all like, it took. we were going to crown Muriel, but in, but Ferrazon was standing closest to the large okay. bird, so he gets to be king. So so then. Uh, Muriel is is made into a uh, she, she's she's a traitor or no uh, Ellen Dill is a traitor right and Muriel takes his place essentially as like he's she's going to a trial now the trial is the trial of the Valar is will a sea monster eat you right that's essentially have so you, they will have you seen Clash of the, the Titans the, from the old, old, the old, old and Andromeda yeah, yeah. gets with get, the Kraken gets eaten by the yeah, Kraken yeah, yeah, yeah. or is going to get eaten by the Kraken yeah that's, that's a great so, movie so they do the same thing they, they they go out to a seaside rocky place where the waters will wash over and they Muriel is going out to stand trial so apparently the Valar as Jonathan mentioned the way the Valar tell you whether you're right or not is whether you, they send a sea monster to eat you poor Dan because now the, like, now, the, so now the Valar are, that's just the way they work. They're like fickle Greek gods. That well, the, 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 sea, the sea is always right. <laughs> that's right. That is what they said in that scene. Are, are you serious? serious? They do. They do. They do. No. They do. And no. so she doesn't eat her. She's cast out. And the same people who were there to watch her destruction the very same people. are now cheering uh, her on. The same 20 people. Uh, so, so, okay. This hurts. So, so, <laughs> so now she's the sea queen. The sea queen. They, they, they call her that in this episode. Because a sea monster didn't eat her, so so she was closest to the sea monster, oh, so she gets to be queen. Uh, Ferrazon is closest to the birds, so he gets to be king, um, and that's the way Numenor yeah. works. And so now we get back to Numenor, and Numenor, the, uh, the white tree of Numenor, is now becoming the brown tree of Numenor. I think it's supposed to be dying. Yeah, it's, it's supposed to be dying. Even though what really happens, it's chopped down and burned by Sauron. It's not actually dying like it did in in um, yeah. in Gondor. Yeah. Um, and so at this point, the the new that now uh, so so our Ferrazon has now gathered the faithful because what happened again? Why did why are the faithful bad again? Now I totally forgot. Because they're, they're, they're bad. Because they're bad. Okay. Oh yes, that's right. So he brings the faithful in, and they're all traitors again, because they got a letter that said oh, this is the best. Sauron has returned, and he, Sauron was there. But how would they know that Sauron was Halbrand yeah. in Numenor? So he's saying. Oh, you faithful? Let me skip forward just a little bit. Uh, you're all traitors. Yeah. We have learned. Uh, because you've been working Saur- with Sauron. You've been, you've been working with Sauron because Sauron was here? Well, the way they, the evidence they present is a piece of paper that says, uh, this is what I wrote in my notes. Like, he reads a piece of paper like, you're all accused of being traitors because you've been working with Sauron. And he hands him a piece of paper, and the guy, the head of the faithful, reads the piece of paper and goes, <gasps> everyone goes, <gasps> and I hit arrow on my notes. It says, <laughs> the piece of paper says, it's Sauron. <laughs> exclamation point, exclamation point. Big, it's, a, it's Sauron. What's funny is, there, it's like, it's, have, a, it's, like a, it's like a social media uh, printout. It's yeah. like uh, like MySpace. <laughs> it's like the faithful has now become friends with Sauron. They're like, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 
so the stupidity of this is so so uh, vast that I, I I feel the need as real Tolkien fans to point out something. The corruption of Numenor. Numenor. This is the race of men who are the one people that actually worship the one God, and they they mm -hmm. you know directly. They didn't mistake the Valar for God. They worshipped Eru um, mm -hmm. on their island. They were they were the most righteous of all the men of Middle Earth, and they were the most powerful. And so, in the real books, for anyone interested listening to us, what really happened was. The Numenorians go and defeat Sauron and capture him and take him prisoner. And then he, they make a mistake. The Pharazon makes yes. a mistake and, and captures him. And he slowly corrupts their people over decades and ends up turning them against the faithful. So the thing that this Rings of Power is trying to do is show the, the, the conflict between the king's men of Numenor, which are the ones that reject the Valar and reject the elves, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the faithful. But that's a conflict that doesn't occur the, at all in any way, shape, or form the way they show it here. It's not like this has all been festering under the... Like, there's no reason for the kings, men, and the faithful to be at odds. The, the, the religion of the people of Numenor is still, is still yeah. the right worship of Eru Iluvatar. Right. And so, um, but they're trying to show it all collapse, and Sauron's not even there. Like, the whole reason that the Numenorean society was corrupted was because Sauron was living but there it's just a, it's, for decades. It's just an, a, a wannabe king. Like that's all. The, yeah, that's the guy who's there, carrying. We're meant out. to believe that their entire society and way of life and the worship of Eru and the faith, being faithful to the Valar as stewards of Eru, all that's supposed to collapse in like three weeks because some guy wants to be king, mm. and, and 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 then. <laughs> well, they change leaders so quickly that it's totally yeah. believable, well, I guess. Look, it know? was like he got one up. He got the Uno reverse card with the sea monster, <laughs> and so and so now he's not king anymore. You know, she, there's a sea queen, and so this is. I mean, this is a, a culture built by children for children. This is the way that fourteen-year-olds think that politics works, and and yeah. and that right. this kind of motivation can so, work. So after this one scene where they say, "Oh, the faithful are bad," the all, just sort of like uh, King Herod going out and killing all the two-year-olds, <laughs> right? Uh, you know, to, to find the Messiah, they go out and start killing, apparently, or arresting all the faithful. So they have they have their roster of where the faithful live. They go and find them. They pull them out of their homes. Uh, Elendil's daughter, Aarian, goes and finds him and says, you must run. They're going to come get you. <laughs> and so they have this, this funny scene of her, essentially, uh, when, when a, so a soldier comes up and says, uh, I'm going to go look over there. And she's like, there's nothing over there. Don't look over there. And he's like, but I'm going to go look over there. She's like, how dare you? Do you want me to tell Farazan that you're disobeying his whatever she's supposed to be? And he's like, hmm, okay, and walks off. I won't go there. And that's his whole. Anyway, so Elendil escapes. Uh, oh yes, the thing was, shall I tell Farazan of your insolence? Who is she anyway? Like, what's her role other than to drop the uh, the palantir down the steps? We don't need to know like why she's in power or what her role is there. So I don't know why the people would be there. So. Uh, I, thought, I thought she was the intern that did the PowerPoints. <laughs> <laughs> she is. Well, you know, what's funny is she doesn't even know why they're being gathered. Like, she rings a bell to gather all the people. Oh, yeah, as if. So like, it's clear that she's not in the inner circle of Farazhan. So, mm. so why on earth the guards would care what she says or believes? Yeah. Like, she's clearly not on the end. Like, she doesn't, she doesn't even know what the guards knew, that yeah. they were there to arrest the faithful. So, yeah. uh, so, so she helps Elendil escape. Elendil mm. escapes uh, to Muriel. And we get uh, another big old member, Barry. Mm -hmm. Is this it? Yep, okay. Uh, let's see, Dan, if you recognize that. Recognize that? Miriam gives, gives him a looks sword. like Anduril. It well, is. it will be Anduril. It's, it's Narsil. That's it is Narsil. And by the way, this, this part is believable. Like, this yeah. is the one scene, like, because Narsil was created by, uh, well, um, Elrogorn on the steps of um, the Golden Halls of Theoden, when his sword is being taken from him by Hama, the, the door guard says, mm -hmm. he gives a brief, he says, in the deeps of time, this sword was crafted by um, Telemachus. Anyway. Um, yeah. Not Telemachus, but yes, I know he did. 
It's, yeah, but it, 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 and, and so, so this, this is, is an ancient, ancient weapon, mm -hmm. and obviously clearly passed to the Numenor through to the Numenorians. And so they, the royal, Numenorian royalty would have had the sword. So at some point, Elendil has to get it. So the question is, how does he get it? And they give us this this theory that he gets it because Muriel tells him to take it and go claim his legacy. His legacy. Let me see what the legacy he has. They have made him into. A, he's a small lord. Yeah, re reclaim. She legacy. says, "Reclaim your was it nobility? Reclaim your, your essentially reclaim your status." With this, now that I give you a sword, go off and, you know, reclaim okay. it. All right. Okay. okay. What's he reclaiming? Like, we haven't known he's lost anything because have, they haven't never showed us that he had anything to lose other than... Well, they showed us that he, yeah, he gave up his maybe connection as a captain. Become a captain again? Maybe? But, <laughs> but like, it, it is, and, and he's by himself. Like, this was never the case. Like, Elendil led a band. He led a group of the faithful. Mm -hmm. But we're shown at the end of this that he's riding off alone with the swords. Like, dude, Muriel gave you a sword. Okay, cool. So now what are you going to do? Um, it's just nothing makes sense in this. So she's, mm -hmm. and she's going to stay and do something, die or fight or whatever. She's going to stay and marry Farazan. Right, we know that. Yeah, that's that's. that's Farazan's going to make a, a ploy to make her bury him. So um, here's the dramatic reveal, and he pulls out Narsa. <gasps> so powerful and strong. He has a sword. Just, you know what I don't like is it's kind of a throwaway thing. Like make Narsa important in a battle, give it a reason for being. A a uh, a respected piece of uh, weaponry, but it's just sort of like here you go, or or yeah, exactly. It, it's a throwaway because they don't even tell us like okay, so you gave me an old sword, cool, um, and now I'm going to go forth and do things. I guess so. I don't understand why he whips it out right there. Like when if he's because, he's being sent away, because, here's a sword. When you just grab it and go, because like, Dan member member Aragorn yeah, whips member. out and holds the sword up to his head. I know why. I know it's why. I'm just saying Aragorn? it doesn't make sense. Mm. It doesn't. I don't know. That's, we have been disabused of the notion of making sense. We I know. Just simply, but yes, yeah, so we can't ask why. We just point it out and go like, that's incredible. I thought the same thing. I, I was like, what, 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 okay. what is going on here? So there is there is a point later um, near the end. I believe it's the, who's, uh, oh, it's it's one of the dirty little sociopaths who gives that little speech at the end. And we see certain things uh, that happen. So we see Ellen Dill. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, this is the very end. We're supposed to be uh, Eleanor... One of the one of the DLSs, um, dirty little Eleanor. Was she in the first season? Yes, yeah, she was. She was the she was, she the she was, friend. She was female Frodo. So so oh, female okay. Frodo and um, is talking. Is it is it Poppy or is it Nori? Eleanor. Uh, maybe it's Poppy. I, I, dude, I don't is know. It Poppy. Don't <laughs> is, it, it, is, it, is it that female Sam? <sighs> you guys have seen sixteen guys, episodes of this, and you don't know the name of the character. Well, I don't know the name of the character. I can't remember which one, uh, whose mouth it came from, oh, okay. Poppy or Eleanor. But anyway, one of the two female DLSs, um, this, one of the two female sociopaths, is giving us the um, the breakdown. And while she's giving us the breakdown of what has to happen yeah. now, we have to. And her her speech is this is the closing speech of the of the um, show. So, okay. Uh, for this I mean, that, was, that wasn't a knock on you guys. It's a knock on the show. Yeah, yeah. You get well, to episode 16, so, and you're like, wait, who's, who's the person that did that? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. what's happening here is she's in, she's in shackles in front of our affairs on the traitor again. This is now a vision that uh, this was a vision that Elendil had of him leaving Romena. Romena, right? That's mm -hmm. the city that we're in. Um, well, at, yeah. Coming true now. <laughs> I just love that. Look at all the, the burning city from those soldiers grabbing the faithful from their homes. Like this like is they burned the whole like city. they burned the whole city to get the So yes. this is the end of the, the story of Numor. He is because going off cities are tight. Where is he going exactly? Do we know? No. Claim his legacy. Like his, ability. his legacy is somewhere else, I guess. Yes, it's on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> you must ride away. Well, he's he's yeah. gonna go find the wizard in the cave that says here, take this. All right. It's dangerous to go alone. <laughs> yes. That's what that's what Andrew was. That's yep. the sword. That's right. Yeah. 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 So how did uh, how did Muriel get her sight back? She doesn't. she doesn't. She doesn't. She doesn't. She's still okay. blind. So she's fun. She's she's doing pretty well though. She's all right. Yeah. She doesn't. She's, she doesn't have any by. problems yeah. navigating. She's, uh, she learned how to read yeah. braille. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> she's got to. Yeah. So there you go. That's the story okay. of Numenor.